Thank you for joining us for another Reunited. My name is Corey Pritchard and just excited for another Reunited. Uh, we have been going right into our series, which is Effective and Efficient Stewardship in God's Kingdom. And uh, this will be another night where I really know uh, that it's a, a, a really a lot of really good things uh, that we can get out of this. So if this is your first time actually joining us, then I highly suggest uh, that you go back through. You can actually find this on YouTube. I believe this is number 18, possibly 17, 18, something like that. So just a number of uh, sessions. Don't expect for you to go through all of those before listening to this one, but it still would be nice to be able to have some of those foundational groundwork type things before coming into this session. Okay. I'm not going to uh, waste any time. Uh, just really excited about being able to have Pastor Burroughs uh, uh, Mark Dwayne Burroughs uh, from Huntsville, as Alabama, here on, on the line with us. Excited to have uh, Brother Greg Grice. Greg Grice is out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. Excited to have him. Emerson Winfield Jr. is actually here also. Uh, they're residing in, in that area. Emerson's been uh, here near me. That's where we met. And also in Houston, Texas. So he's been a few different places, but they're near Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my wife, Bridget Pritchard, is actually on the line. And just excited about having anybody. So Emerson actually uh, said that he would be willing to share something uh, before we get started. And I'm excited about that. And anybody else, again, feel free. If it's something that's on your heart, uh, make sure that you say it. Or if there's any questions that you would like to ask, make sure you do that. Uh, but that being said, Emerson, I'd like for you to go ahead and uh, and, and take, a, say, take us in. All right, great, Corey. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, always glad to be on. I'm not going to uh, take up too much of the time, but I just want to for the listening audience, uh, those that are on and those that may come on at a latter time to to hear the recording, uh, those of you that may have listened before, uh, this this setting here, I'm very grateful for it. I'm very grateful for Corey, uh, what he does every uh, Thursday night, uh, how he has a love for God. He has a love for the word of God. He has a love for God's people. i uh, just very grateful because of his maturity. And I want to people to know you may have heard uh, sometimes me and Corey don't necessarily see eye to eye on certain topics or or certain scriptures or certain things. But guess what? Because there's a maturity level that we're grown and we're adults, we're not babes. We are able to do that and still yet let the love of God shine through us. There's no faking fakiness about this. If that's a word, fakiness, I don't know. But I'm very grateful that I I ran into this brother because. Uh, in my time past, coming across people who you don't necessarily agree with, they're saying they cut you off. Uh, you never really have anything. There's not the unity, uh, as the scripture tells us, to keep the unity of the spirit. And that's what we do. We keep the unity of the spirit. Although they, someone may hear the recording, they may think, man, them brothers don't necessarily agree uh, with that or, or that. And they sell me, uh, I hope I don't uh, portray myself in trying to uh, do anything other than the form is open. And we are we have entitled here. We're not trying to sway anyone, but sway them into the Word of God. Sway them to understand that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He's the one that will direct and guide us. But that doesn't mean that we don't necessarily have different revelations in, in different areas when it comes to the Word of God. So I just wanted to make some clarity there. Uh, but because a lot of times when you deal with people who have been used to just denominations and my church, your church, and we're over here and they're over there and you don't see it like I see it. And we're going to split up and time out for that. That is not God. That has never been God. And for two individuals who love the Lord, who walk uh, and want to do and carry out the purpose of God in teaching and instructing and running people into the arms of Jesus. Sometimes this is what it is, but this is real. And I just wanted to uh, put that out there. And uh, let this uh, people, the listening on it, know I respect his brother highly, respect him, his love for God again, his love for the Word of God, his love for his family. Uh, I consider him a mighty man of God and a great friend of mine. And I say it all the time uh, God shows me the love that he has for me by the people that he's placed in my life. And so I just wanted to uh, make that clear. So those that have never, uh, 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 kind of been in a setting such as this, and they've never heard somebody disagree, does not mean anything. I mean, this brother are, 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 are been yoked together by God. And as the scripture tells us, what God is joined together, we let nothing uh, tear apart. Thank you so much for the time, Corey. Please go ahead. 
and I want to say uh, thank you. Uh, and I don't know, you know, how often that people on here have heard things like that, but that usually doesn't happen, to be honest with you. And that shows the work of God uh, in Emerson, you know, working in in this atmosphere. And that's what it's supposed to be about. And I really appreciate you, Emerson. Uh, you have helped me in so many ways. As many times where it's pretty pretty low. I'm not gonna not gonna lie to you. It's, it's not the most. Um, uh, I don't know what what the thing is, but in in re, in religious activities, I'll say uh, I may have been celebrated. You know, I could have went into a, a different avenue. I wouldn't have been happy about it, but I probably could have went down those roads. And I really believe there could have been some celebration. You know, a lot more people who probably would have been excited to to be. Uh, you know, I guess uh, get into the what is it called? Inspiration and and motivation, right? Those things, it's those types of things, and being appealing to people's souls, and that's just not what God was le leading me to. So, as many times uh, by myself, <laughs> you know, just feeling really low. I'm not gonna lie, feeling really, really low. And it was uh, a lot of times that I had conversations with Emerson, and uh, he's just stirring stuff up on the inside of me, and really encouraging me, and just, just really uh, appreciate, you know, what what God placed in you to be able to allow me to be able to hear and, and our in our friendship. I just want to say, you know, thank you so much. You've been a a huge part of, of the growth, you know, in, in everything, not just with what we're trying to do here uh, on Reunited, but just with this whole walk. And it is not at all what I ever expected. There's no way that anybody could have told me what to expect from this. Uh, but I can tell you for sure that this is not at all what I expected. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I want to say that this is meant to be a family atmosphere. And when I say family, uh, when we very first started, Emerson and I had a conversation about what we felt like we needed to do. And it was more or less just opening up the conversations that we were having. We were having some really good conversations about the word of God and really wanted to share the things about the kingdom of God. And we had a meeting, I believe uh, Brother Greg G may have been there. I can't remember. I know, I know it was me and Emerson. And I felt really like we needed to, to dial it in, not just being more of a like an evangelistic type of thing where we're sharing uh, the, the preaching the gospel, the kingdom of God to people that have never heard of any of that. Just really felt like we really did really needed to hone in for people with people that have already confessed hope and faith in Jesus Christ, right? Baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, right? Whatever that is, but already, right? Really in love with Jesus Christ are really wanting to, uh, you yeah, know, made a commitment to, in God through Jesus Christ. And I just really felt like that is the direction we need to go in. So with that being said, uh, this is supposed to be a family atmosphere. And I'm not sure if you've ever been, you know, in some family, you know, atmospheres, it ain't always pretty right it's not always pretty and the beauty about having you know a relationship with the person being you know blood relationship is you guys usually you know you can hash it out and be mad at each other or something but you come back together why because nothing's going to change that that's your brother or your mother or your sister now i know that there are people that don't talk to those siblings and, and parents anymore in, in some strange cases but for the most part you know people come back together and with us we have to be able to do a much better job of being a family I need to be able to say what's on my heart and what's on my mind. Emerson needs to be able to say what's on heart, his heart and his mind. If there's questions, if there's stuff he does not agree with, he should be able to say that. That's that's something he should be able to say. Where else should he be able to hash those things out if he can't get them done here? Where else can Brother Greg G or, or Pastor Mark or my wife or anyone else is really truly seeking to grow in the kingdom of God and the things that, you know, about the kingdom of God? Like, where else are you going to get this? I'm not aware of any other atmosphere that's completely dedicated uh, to the kingdom of God. So we want to make sure that we're allowing that. So for people that have heard the recordings, maybe they could have misunderstood something like that. And I get it. And that's the reason why Emerson wanted to make sure he cleaned that up to say, no, <laughs> look, look, we're, we're, hey, we're, we're family, right? Well, I love him. He loves me. And if we don't see eye to eye, we're just trying to get to the place where we think that God wants us to be at. And we're both seeking the same thing, right? So with that being said, so I want to say thank you so much, Emerson, again. Uh, uh, Pastor Mark, want to see if there's anything you'd like to say, uh, Greg. Greg, is there anything you'd like to say, uh, Bridget, or anybody else before we move forward? All right. Well, at, at any point, again, you unmute yourself, and if it's something you'd like to say, feel free to share it. Okay, we're gonna go right in. My goal is to take 45 minutes. I've said that before. Uh, my wife talks about a. Uh, 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 I want to just call it out, but someone she's worked with or worked with in the past, I'll leave it that way. And how for her is very important to know 
what time you're starting and what time you're ending. And it messes with her not knowing when something's going to end. So it's something I've really been praying about. I said it probably a year ago and I got to get back to doing better with that. So we got 45 minutes. I'm going to do what's in that. OK. And if we want to talk, if you guys have questions, there's no rush. OK, let's do whatever it is the Holy Spirit wants to get out of this time. Uh, I just want to do better about being obedient about that. And we can always reconvene the other sessions or create new sessions if we need to. Uh, but let's be be very good about the time that we have. And I have more than enough right to carry us through. So don't worry about that. In addition to whatever it is that the Holy Spirit would like to say, uh, in addition to that. So it's more than enough. So not worried about that. Just want to make sure, again, I'm doing better about time. But also, again, making sure that it's efficient and effective. So we're going to pack it, you know, in, in here to make sure we're getting everything we can get out of. OK, so with that being said, uh, this is the first scripture and it's not on my list, but I really believe we need to go there. So if you don't mind. Open up and take a look at Luke chapter 12 and let's start in verse number 30, 35. OK. And and the reason why I want to do this is it's, it's more of a, a reconvening or a reminder, OK, because we're under this umbrella of effective and efficient stewardship in God's kingdom. Every word is vitally important. Right. So we should all of us be be either seeking or, or, or already have entered into the kingdom of God. Right. That should be all of our reality. I would have to say at this point that we should have repented, right? Because the kingdom of God has, has come. We all should have converted, right? And made that decision for ourselves. We should be seeking to see God's kingdom more and more every single day and, and, and being able to, again, enter in more, right? So it's not just about standing at the gate, but actually entering in deeper and deeper, getting a deeper knowing and actually the deeper manifestation of the things that God has for us, okay? So with that being said, then the stewardship reality, it is a role that we have, okay? It's not all, right? But it, it takes care of a lot if we can see ourselves as God's stewards and we don't own anything. As, as difficult as that might be, the quicker we can get into that reality, the better things are, right? So when we're dealing with where we are right now in this health portion, again, I said at least three areas, I believe that we can make some headway in at least these three areas I truly believe the momentum will carry us into so much more that God wants us to do. Those being health, wealth, and relationships, okay? And this stewardship reality is if it is so real that if I can understand that I don't own this physical body, <laughs> it's not mine, right? It was bought with the price. There's many scriptures that tell us I don't own me, right? The Holy Spirit. He walks within this body. He dwells within me. We were bought with the price, all these things. But we say it, but do we really mean that, right? There are many decisions that we would that we would not make that we make and many things that we would do that we don't do if we understand that God owns it all, including, right, this physical body. My soul belongs to him. Me as a spirit being, we belong to God, right? So it should change everything that we do in life if we come under that reality okay so let's look at again uh luke chapter 12 and beginning in verse 35 and it's and it reads let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their lord okay and this is jesus christ red letter and he's sharing the parable with his disciples and again, the beauty about what we need to understand about what Jesus is sharing in parables is he is sharing with his disciples secrets that have been stored up from the foundation of the world. OK, there are prophets and kings that desire to hear what you hear. So I want to make sure I'm very clear about when we look at the words of Jesus Christ, we should not take them for granted because he never wastes words. OK, so. Again, looking at what Jesus Christ is saying, try to try to ask the Holy Spirit either right now or you can come back at the recording and say, show me what Jesus Christ is conveying in this parable, because this ain't just no ordinary story. What is he wanting me to get as his disciple from this? OK, so again, and he says, and when he will return from the wedding. And when he cometh and knocketh. They may open 
unto him immediately, right? So obviously there's symbolism here and he's sharing wedding, which we've heard in other stories. And it says he's going to come back, okay? And when he comes, the expectation is, is that we would open immediately. And that, that was one that really hit me when I started to think about how distracted we can become about many things in life, even this health thing, right? So praise God for health, right? Praise God for healing. But the reality is in Matthew chapter six, verse 33, we were commanded to seek what first, right? Not health, right? Not healing, right? Not money, right? Not even faith, right? Not relationships. We were commanded to seek first God's kingdom, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And the, and the beautiful thing is, is when we look at the model prayer, right? We look at this prayer that Jesus Christ is giving to his disciples in response to them asking, can you teach us how to pray, right? John teach, taught his disciples and the Pharisees taught their disciples, can you teach us how to pray? So Jesus starts out and it's amazing because his prayers don't line up with our prayers, right? His model and framework of praying does not line up with our model and framework of praying, right? And it's amazing. He he instructs the disciples and he's speaking to you if you can understand how Jesus Christ is operating. So yes, he's talking to the current disciples, but Jesus has a way of speaking throughout generations, right? So he's speaking to them, but he's also speaking to us. And he says that we pray our father, right? And, and I thank God for people that are sharing this new covenant you know, message, but I'm going to be honest with you that, that Jesus Christ could have established a new covenant reality if he wanted to, but the connection that he wanted us to make was not through a covenant. The connection that he wanted us to make was to be reconnected with our reality, which has been restored through himself, which is our father, right? The us as his children. So when we understand how high it is that, that God has allowed us to come through Jesus Christ, then you'll say, I think I'm thankful that there were and there was an old covenant. And I'm thankful that Paul was sharing to people that believed they were still under the old covenant, that there is a new covenant reality to these Hebrew Israelite people. But the highest revelation is not covenant. It is in family, right? It is in the reality that you have been made kings and I have been made a king in God's kingdom, and he sees me as a priest, and he sees me as a Lord, and he sees me as an ambassador, right? And he sees me as all these things, and Jesus Christ makes sure we understand that when we are praying to God is that we want to know that this reality is, is that I'm praying to not a far off God. I'm praying to my Father, my heavenly Father, and Jesus repeats this many times in his ministry, our heavenly Father, or my heavenly Father, or father in heaven so there's no mistake about where god is and then how he wants to relate to us as we come into his kingdom so he says our that's yours that's mine our father right and and, and the beauty is he says that when we can make that connection that reality and we know where he is because he jesus christ tells us that the, our, our king's location our father's location which is in heaven now, the, the thing we can do is we can get common with it, right? And, and Jesus wants to make sure that we don't get common because he says, hallowed be your name, right? So, yeah, you're my father, and you have restored me back to that, that relationship with you, but, but you're high. You're still the most high God. You're still the Elohim, right? You're still the, 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 the uh, Yahovah, right? You're still all these wonderful names that men have given to God throughout history. So don't make god common because he's not so he says hallowed right and set apart and high and holy is your name now the beauty is that we shouldn't have any mistake about what should be our priority it's established in worship it's established in prayer right that god's name is hallowed and, and we know that god wants us to be reconnected back into his family because we can say our father right with the God who's located in heaven, but he says, what? Your kingdom come. Isn't that a powerful thing? So again, in, in, in Matthew 6 and 33, he commands us to seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness first and above all. But then Jesus Christ 
reemphasize it by this model prayer because the first thing that we petition for is what? Not money. No, not car, not house. Mm -mm. Not relationship, not even your health and your healing, right? The first thing that God says that we petition for through Jesus Christ is what? Your kingdom come. <laughs> And, and that should be our mindset. So thank God for the health and the healing that's manifesting in our lives. But we can't get so set uh, 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 on, on this health and healing thing because it's a natural thing that we can physically touch and experience that we miss what God truly wants us to be able to hit and aim at every single time, which is what his kingdom. So I'm petitioning God every single day. God, let your kingdom come. Why? Because in every place that God's kingdom resides, now God's will can be done. Now, the sad thing is that a lot of people say they seek the will of God, but have no understanding of his kingdom. But how can God's will be done without his kingdom coming? Right. How can God's kingdom come in your heart, in my heart, without or, or, or God's will be done in your heart, in my heart, without his will being without his kingdom coming? So the kingdom come proceeds the will be done if that makes sense so religion sometimes takes us out and makes us think that we can create our own way into god and we can decide what god's will is but god showed us his perfect will in his son that he sent and jesus christ always had the kingdom on his lips and he's always shooting and aiming at the kingdom and how is it that we can have our aim at anything else and find ourselves in any other place so with that being said just understand that thank God for health and healing, right? Thank God for faith. But the reality is, is that God desires that we seek his kingdom above all, right? So we ask and petition, let your kingdom come in this earth as it already is in heaven, right? If that makes sense. So I wanted to make sure I can pause with that. Let me finish this parable. Well, I want to make sure, again, I'm saying that the parables are packed and the stewardship is in the parables. And if Jesus Christ said being a steward is important and he sees me as being a steward, then I'm going to stop chasing other stuff. And I'm going to say, God, let me see me the way you see me. <laughs> let me see Emerson the way you see Emerson. Let me see Pastor Mark the way you see him. And you said here that this is the way you view us. OK, so again, we want to be set on the kingdom of God. Why? Because when our king returns and he will. The expectation is, is that we be watching and praying so that we can open up immediately. Ain't no time to get the stuff together, right? Maybe you was off and distracted and maybe I was dealing with some stuff or whatever it is. I don't want to have to even think about saying to my king when he knocks, hold up, right? I need a moment, right? Give me a second, right? I don't know if we're going to get that opportunity. Here's the expectation is that we're watching and we're ready and that when he knocks it says that we will open immediately in 37 blessed are those servants okay you can look in their steward also interchangeable but blessed as a reality are those servants whom the lord when he cometh shall find watching do you see this this is you this is me verily i say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and he said the king is gonna serve you <laughs> it's the kind of kingdom you got. It don't it, it don't make a, a physical carnal sense, but absolutely makes faith. OK, and 38. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them. So he says, what blessed are those servants? And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through be ye therefore ready as a command also for the son of man cometh at an hour right when ye think not okay and this is again the reality of it okay whether we want to believe that or not so with with that being said then what i'm saying is is that we are in god's kingdom now OK, again, if we've done the things I talked about earlier, if your eyes are able to see, your ears are able to hear, if your heart is able to perceive, we repent, we convert 
and we're entered into the kingdom of God and we're seeing the kingdom of God more and more every single day, then here is the reality. The reality is that these things will happen for us and we are in God's kingdom now. Now, here's the thing. We are aiming for the kingdom of heaven while living in the reality of the kingdom of God now, right? So we're walking out that reality and the goal is to bear great fruits of righteousness for our king in his kingdom as I'm aiming at the kingdom of God, okay? So I had to say that because there are, there are those on the line right now OK, specifically Emerson, I'm going to be very, very honest. And there's a number of other people, but there's many things that are going to come. That very well should qualify to take our attention. Right. And it, and it hurts. And, and it's difficult. Many times we don't understand. Right. And then we are, we're in this kingdom and we're saying, God, <laughs> how am I going to keep seeking first your kingdom with all of this pressure? on me how am i gonna keep aiming for your kingdom the kingdom of heaven in the kingdom of god with all of this and i'm saying to you that that that, that that's where we have to always keep being reminded what jesus christ says why because the reality is is that jesus christ says if we seek that first his kingdom first then all these things will be added unto us so it's not like god is gonna say i I know you need it, but I'm not going to provide it. Mm -mm. He specifically says that before you pray that I know what you need. Now, the challenge is it takes faith to continue to pursue his kingdom, knowing I may need something else. Right. Does that make sense to trust God that he's going to be able to supply the things I need and everything that I truly need is in his kingdom. So as the kingdom begins to continue to be revealed, right, as the revelation has continued to be unpacked, then understand that these things are all in it, right? You don't have to go chasing all these different doctrines, all these different things in order for these things to come that you need. No, it's all a part of the program, okay? So I'm going to pause. I want to see, is there any comments, any questions before I pick up uh, tonight with, with, with what we have for tonight? Any comments, any questions, any anything from anybody before we move forward? All right. Well, praise God. We're going to continue to go forward. And as I'm saying again, Emerson, love you. Right. So much. Uh, Beverly, my, my mother in law. Right. She's dealing with a little bit of temptation. No big deal. Love you very much. Uh, not sure what Pastor, you know, Mark and Ramona. Right. What they may be dealing with. But, you know, love you very much. OK, uh, uh, Greg. OK, on here. Love you very much. OK, anybody else is here just sitting here on this line. I'm telling you, listen. It's OK. Everything is going to be just fine. Right. Decide tonight if you haven't already that you're going to stick your heels in the ground. And in faith. Right. You say, Holy Spirit, show me how to seek your kingdom. Spirit of God, show me, reveal to me. What does it mean to seek the kingdom of God? What does it mean to seek the righteousness of God? Reveal that to me more and more every day and that takes faith because it's always going to be something that's going to be distracting you right to try to take your attention so i'm saying to you all it's going to be just fine right trust and believe that everything we need is in here okay is everything that we need is in the god in the, in the kingdom of god anybody have something to say yeah brother Corey, i just wanted to jump in for a minute you know as, as we're talking about seeking the kingdom you know Whenever we we talk about seeking God, uh, you know we we always have this sense of earnestness and um, pressing that is necessary. You know, John, come the kingdom; every man presses into it. The violent take it by force. I think there's a bookend that's extremely important to our faith as we seek the kingdom, as uh, Jesus said in Luke chapter twelve, verse thirty-two. He says, do not fear, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And so, not talking about my private prayer life, but every single day, I remind the Father and I remind Jesus of that truth. Because absent that, 
you know, I will get into a struggling and straining as though I've got to wrestle something that's already available to me out of his hands or something that I've got to put together some string of efforts uh, to attain. And so I believe Jesus was intentional in saying, do not fear. Don't be anxious. Don't be apprehensive. Uh, you know, don't, don't be, uh, don't have a sense of, um, is he willing? Uh, is it available? Or what, you know? And so I, I think that anytime we're dealing with things, it's always that temptation of fear, you know, of anxiety, of fretting. And, uh, you know, and, and as you were talking earlier, I wanted to jump in for a minute, but we're talking about the things the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, that the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things that have been revealed belong to uh, us and our children forever. It says something very interesting in the message translation. Deuteronomy 28, 29 says, God and our God will take care of the hidden things, but the revealed things are our business. It is up to us and our children to attend to all the terms of this revelation. And so, um, you know, if we're not to approach, you know, the father with a sense of fear about the kingdom, then there must be a sense of confidence and a boldness that this belongs. This, this, this has been revealed and it belongs to me. Whatever the Lord has revealed to me, it, it belongs to us, you know. And so I think it's important for us to shore up ourselves in this confidence and not let fear grip us uh, when we see things occurring and happening that don't look like the kingdom, because we do encounter things that don't look like the kingdom and uh, the, the, the truths that have been revealed uh, of the kingdom. And so that's when anxiety and fear begins to try to grip us and change our focus, change uh, and, 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 and create a fear in our hearts. And so I just wanted, I just wanted to share that. Uh, that's all I have. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone else uh, want, want to share? I know uh, great brother Greg, uh, for those that can't see his uh, chat and he said, awesome word, uh, awesome privilege. Uh, yeah. just, just wonderful. Any, anybody else? Yeah, let me kind of piggyback in there what uh, Pastor Mark was saying uh, and, and what you were saying and what everyone's saying. It is so very true. Everything in the kingdom is real. Everything in the kingdom is ours. And it said, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, as Pastor Mark just brought out. And when somebody gives you something, all you do is something that uh, Pastor Mark said, you do is receive it. It's receiving. Now, if all I do is receiving, why is there a pressing then? Because there are things in this world that will try to distract you from receiving. And, and, and one other thing I want uh, us to know, and I'm probably talking to myself more than anything, it tells me that the kingdom of God is, is for sure. It's been done. It's here. It's available. Uh, all the benefits, everything, the culture itself is what we're to live up under, is to stay up under no matter what. But there's also something to go along with that. That, that we have to embrace too. And this is what it is. I'm talking to myself more than anything. In this world, you will have the promise of God. As I've said it before like that, we often want to embrace the promises of the kingdom and all the things of the kingdom and as we embrace it and walk into it and live up under it. And things. But listen, we have to embrace this too. This is not a part of the kingdom, but it's a part of this world. So as it says, we have dual citizenship. I live in this world also. But it tells me that in this world, you will have trials and tribulations. Even though I'm a part of the kingdom and everything in the kingdom is guaranteed, it's, it's here and it's, it's my father's good pleasure to give it to me. But I'm also in this world. And so with that being said, it says in this world, you'll have trials and tribulations, but don't stop there. But it says, but be of good cheer after that, because he's overcome that. That's what the kingdom of God is about. Not saying that you won't escape 
the trials and tribulations. And this is this is this is one of the toughest times in my life. In my life, brother. I spent twenty six, maybe twenty seven, twenty five years on drugs and strung out and wanting to kill myself and all that, but nothing has ever been more tougher than this that I'm going in today. But guess what? Because of his word and because of, of seeking first the kingdom and because I got a hold of some scriptures, God knows what we need way ahead of time. He says, he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. The dwelling and the abiding that was given to me some months earlier has allowed me to stay right there. Uh, not saying I had been moved or anything like that, but it's been moved for a second, but then I, I snapped back because of the dwelling and the body. So, yeah, I just wanted to thank you, but so I'll be quiet. I'll let somebody else go. Yeah, um, Brother Curry, I was sitting here meditating, and I, and I would like to share this. I, uh, it is an issue that I believe that is <clears throat> Somewhat some uh, symbolical tied into that I don't believe one could be separated from the other. Uh, we was talking about covenant. Uh, the kingdom is built off of covenant promises. Pastor Mark was talking about there was those promises that you know I don't have to beg and they're already mine. And the covenant reveals to me. The construct of the king, what is built off of a covenant of promise, built on better promises than the old covenant. In those promises, give me assurance, give me confidence, and give me boldness. It's a covenant. <clears throat> a kingdom is an eternal kingdom that God has given us. And these are covenant promises that are eternal. And it is true then, I be reading these covenant of promises, I can begin to understand how the kingdom operates, the culture of the kingdom. Mr. Winfield always talking about this is a culture in this kingdom. We don't operate in fear and in worry because of the assurance that is found in the covenant. All the promises in Christ Jesus are yeah, and then there, amen. It's these promises that I hold on to that in this kingdom, that these promises are mine and I hold on to a blood bought covenant that I hold on to that give me the confidence when I'm facing whatever I'm facing. And I could trust God. I could stand on his word, on his promises, because it's possible for God to lie, can't lie. And I'm able to walk in victory regardless of what I face. This is the king we're in. This is the kingdom built on these covenant of promises. So I think the two go hand in hand and we can't separate one from the other. Uh, just like to share that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brother Greg. Uh, thank you, Emerson. Uh, anyone else like like to share? Awesome. Awesome. And I'll just say as we're moving forward, uh, and I, I, I try not to you know say too much about certain things only because uh, I know how sensitive not anybody on the line, but there's some other people that I need to have a conversation with. I haven't had a, had a have not made a conversation with, but I know that that conversation is coming. And when I say that about covenant, not not to belittle uh, or diminish the covenant, but the reality is is that again, uh, for a number of people, then the highest revelation that they believe that they can have, or the highest connection that they believe they have, is in the covenant. And and I'm saying it because I hadn't heard anybody tell me this before. It's not. It's a restoration of uh, again, family, again, Adam, uh, that relationship that God had with Adam, uh, it was with father, right? So Adam was the first son, Jesus was the first begotten son. So that's the reason why I'm saying that in that way, because again, through looking at the ministry of Jesus Christ, and he, he could have said a lot of things about uh, some things, but he does not. Uh, and I know a lot of people are bringing some things in and not that they're not true, uh, but I truly believe that the highest revelation that God wants to reveal is in Jesus Christ. And there's a reason why he doesn't say that as much only because is it real? Yeah. Is it true? Yeah. But is it the highest, you know, uh, reality that God wants us to focus on? I do not believe that it is. I believe it's that sonship again, family, 
Uh, again, connecting with God is, is our father, God, the father. And, and that is the highest thing. So but what you're saying is absolutely spot on. So thank you so much, Brother Greg G. Uh, Emerson, uh, again, thank you uh, for, for sharing. Again, we listen to this and this is real. And one thing I want anybody to listen on this uh, to understand is that it either works or it doesn't. So when you're in a position, you know, like some of the people have been in when life comes, right? Or these trials and tribulations, these circumstances, see, this going to work or it ain't. That's just the reality of it. I don't care how many scriptures you know or you know how long you've been in church, how much tithes you've been given. None of that don't matter. Either it's working and you're able to hold on and your faith can stand or it's not. Right. And I think that that's what we need to understand, that this kingdom is real and that Jesus Christ, what he established is real. So if we are in those moments. It will stand. Right. We will be able to stand. And that's what we're finding, you know, in dealing with this. Me, myself, I can't I can't talk for nobody else. But I'm telling you, me for me, if this wasn't working, I'd be done. Like it, it, it's just not worth it. It's not worth the lonely nights. It's not worth the persecution. Right. It's not worth being completely, completely, completely ignored. It's not worth being misunderstood. Right. It's not worth the the investment of time and energy and emotion that that goes into something like this with what what seems like little little or no return, right? I mean that, that that's just not worth it. So either it's working or it's not. And I'm saying to you, it's far more than about the amount of people that can come on the line. Thankful for anybody that comes. Far more, you know, than people to listen to the recording. I'm thankful for people to listen to the recording, right? It's far more than any attention or money that somebody could give to me. I could care less about that. This stuff has to work in my life, right? When I'm running my business and I don't understand what to do, listen, I got to be able to come to this word and look at my king and say, listen, something here got to work for me. You made these promises. So either it's working in my business or it's not. In my personal life, when my physical body, pain comes, sickness comes, whatever temptation try to come, listen, Either it's working or it's not, because if I'm winding up at the doctor and on prescriptions and doing all that crazy stuff, what's the point? Why would I go through all of this when I'm going to wind up at the doctor in the hospital on pills and medication anyways? I might as well just say forget all of this because it's, it's 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 just an easier route. OK, so what I'm saying is either it's working for us in our in our lives or it's not. So what I'm saying is, is that the things that Jesus Christ has established is working. Now, do we know it the way that we should know? But what we know and we try, yeah, it, it's working for us. OK, so for anybody that's listening in on the recording that may be like, you know, yeah, I get it. You know, I've been there, done that, blah, blah, blah. And that stuff don't work. I'm telling you, OK, lock in, lock in. The kingdom is a real thing. Jesus Christ is a reality. He is our rock here in the kingdom. His sayings are the foundation. We can stand on those. So when the winds come, right, when the when the floods come, right, when the, when the rain and all that stuff beats vehemently on the house, the promise is the house is going to stand. There is no promise in anything else. But he can make the promise that the house is going to stand if we build on the rock on the foundation, the house will stand. So I'm telling you, that is the reality. Then does it feel good going through it? No, <laughs> don't feel good. It, it never was no promise that we won't have pain and discomfort, right? That wasn't the promise, but we'll stand. And it's going to work out in the end. Right. And it will work out. OK, so just want to make sure I can say that and just thank everybody, you know, for 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 everything. OK, that you have uh, done and are doing. I know that you're praying. I know that you're serving many people in your lives. Right. I know there's a tremendous amount of value that God has been able to display to other people through you. So I'm just saying thank you. Right. Thank you for all the prayers you're throwing up. Thank you for all the sacrifices that you make. Thank you for the time that you spend in the word of God. Thank you for the money that you give and the time that you that you that you volunteer. Thank you. Right. Because it takes all of that. It really does, because this world is void of many of those things. And without the people that are willing to allow those things to be distributed through them from God, then where is it going to come from? <laughs> right. So I just want to say thank you for that. Any other comments? We got 10 minutes and I'd like to get into a couple of scriptures as we're as we're uh, closing up. Uh, Let me say one quick thing. Uh, here, no real quick. I, no real. All right. I, I don't I, I'm not I'm, I'm being perfectly honest. I don't quite understand. Uh, maybe I don't. And we'll have to talk about it later. I don't want to come on the show. But the, this last covenant that we talk about, the new covenant, uh, I, I don't uh, I know this, that that new covenant was not made between anybody else but God and himself. He never made that new covenant with a man or anything else. He made it between him and himself. 
I think that's why it's a better covenant. The scripture refers to it as a better covenant. And so outside of that, I don't quite follow follow you what you're saying, Corey. Maybe I'll I'll get some clearer understanding on it uh, uh, later. But but uh, I don't. You know, this is what I know that that covenant. I just wanted to state that fact that that covenant was made between him and himself. That covenant that God made this new covenant. So thank you, thank you. Very good. Yeah, very good. So maybe we can make some time to actually go into that at a at a later date. Any any anybody else on that or anything else before we move forward? Yeah, I, I just uh, I would just say this um, is that it's so important for us to, you know, when John said in the beginning, the word and the word was with God. The word was God. It's, it's so important to always realize that God and what he says are inseparable. He cannot lie. And so sometimes we relegate his words to words like men. And we try to put terms on his word, but, you know, Numbers 23, now he is not a man that he should lie. It's just a whole nother category. Uh, neither is he the son of man he should repent. Whatever he says, he brings to pass. And uh, whatever he speaks, he makes good on because his words are inseparable from him. He doesn't have to say anything. So when he says something, it's out of the isness of who he is and his will and his supreme authority and power. And so we have to embrace, uh, you know, embrace that. Uh, and and let it be living within us as it truly is alive and powerful, and it'll always prosper in what it sends to do. It'll always accomplish what it pleases, um, because it, it is it it it'll never return void. So we we just have to honor. When we honor His Word, we honor Him, because He's exalted His Word above all His name. Amen. Amen. Any anyone else? And again, it's no rush. If I don't get to these scriptures, I am fine with that because what we're doing is far more important than that. So anyone else? All right. Well, we're going to spend the next uh, few minutes here just get into a couple of these things. Sorry about the good thing is some of these we have actually seen before. Uh, I told you when I put these notes together, I actually had the back end or the last section of it at the end, right? So I brought it to the forefront. Some of these things were some of the ones that we actually have talked about before, but I do want to go ahead and touch on maybe one or two of these things just because uh, for someone that either has not heard this before, right? Or someone that has heard it, but maybe would like some more clarity, okay? So let's take a take a look at Matthew chapter 13, okay? And the scripture is found in verse 15, okay? And again, this is Matthew chapter 13 and it's verse number 15. And it reads, for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Okay. And that again is coming off of the parable of the sore uh, in Jesus Christ. And this is what he is sharing in response to the questions that the disciples had about why he is teaching them in parables. Okay. And uh, my note is, is that repenting is a change in direction. OK, and conversion is a change in location. OK, I'll repeat that. Repenting is a change in direction. And conversion is a change in location. OK, so as I was uh, uh, I was facing. Let's see, I was facing the walking direction. OK, I'm not sure what I meant by that, but I was facing and walking in one direction. OK in opposition to the will of god so whatever direction it is i was walking in and this is all of us have found ourselves in that place it could it may not have been 
and stealing or lying or any of those types of things, but there was something that was outside of God's will, and we were walking in a direction that was not the kingdom of God. Okay, so when we're talking about specifically God's restoring or the restoration of God's kingdom, that we were headed in another direction. Okay, it could be in religion. A lot of times we can have religious ideas that are still outside of the will of God, and we were facing in that direction in opposition to the will of God. So I repent and return to face God's will. Hope that makes sense. So when we're thinking about repenting, understand that's the image that we should see is that we're turning back to face the will of God. Okay. So I repent and I change direction. Conversion is a complete change of location or address. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So it's not just a change in direction. I literally am changing my address and location. Okay. In a conversion, I was in the kingdom of darkness. I am now in the kingdom of God's dear son. Okay, does that make sense? So I was once in darkness. I am now in light. Now, this is the way the way it should be. And I have to make sure I'm saying it specifically among people who have already confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, because I know for reality, there are many people that truly believe because I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord because I'm speaking in tongues that my location has changed. I'm telling you, no, we can see it by the way that we are looking at God. What are we praying? What are we reading? Right? Is it is it in you know what what Jesus Christ established? And for many of us, no way. Okay, I'm not saying it's you. I'm saying, but for many of us, it's not the case. Okay, so this is the way that we should be looking at it. Okay, I was once in death, and now I'm in life. Repentance should be naturally, or repentance should naturally be the first step toward a change in location. Does that make sense? So the repentance should lead to the change of location. So I turn from something so that I can receive a change of location, right? I am still in the world, but I am no longer of the world. So physically, my name, uh, my, my main address, I think is what it's supposed to be. Sorry about that. But physically, my address has not changed, yet spiritually, my new address is in heaven. Does that make sense? Okay, because we are again are in the world, but we're not of it. Okay, we're reborn from heaven when we have the reality of what God wants to establish in our lives. Heaven is my renewed spiritual citizenship. Okay, just again trying to get this kingdom mindset to see the reality of who God sees us as. Okay, heaven is my renewed spiritual citizenship. Now let's look at the promise that we have been provided with our change of spiritual location and address, which is conversion. Okay. And, um, I'm honestly not going to dig into this because it's going to open up a whole nother thing and we don't have time for it. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is, and I'm going to uh, leave a note, but actually we got three minutes. So I'll, I'll touch on a few of those things. But what I wanted to make sure that we can see is, is that when I underline here, convert it and heal them, then I wanted to make sure that we can see what the some of the deeper things are for people that are interested in actually, you know, studying the studying the Bible. So with that being said, then uh, this heal, the word that you see there is heal is also translated make whole. OK, you can if you look at a Bible concordance and it's translated G2390. Now, why am I saying that? I'm not trying to make you a Bible scholar. But the reality is there are some things that you can gain so that when the, the Holy Spirit is having conversations with you, we have ears to hear a little bit louder or a little more precise for me. Maybe it's just me, but I'm telling you, by seeing more truth, then it helps me to be able to accept more truth or receive more truth. OK, so the word that they use there, it, it is translated as to uh, to cure, right, to heal, to make whole, to 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 free from errors and sin to bring about one salvation so i wanted you to see that because again I, I brought it up in the in the previous time that we we were together that jesus christ says that here in this one heal but then we say in the other one uh forgive for sins right so you can see the connection so when somebody's dealing with this health right there should be a natural reality in the kingdom of god should be natural for us and then it's because something has has been severed and, and not functioning the way that God desires that now we have to seek a healing, right? In some cases, but the reality is when we come into the kingdom of God, 
that that is something that Jesus Christ offers as a benefit to us, not just the forgiveness of our sins, right? It's not just the forgiveness of our sins. I want to make sure I'm clear that to heal and make whole, that is a part of our benefits, right? Many of us may not have received that. We may have received that I can receive salvation if I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? For whatever reason, we believe that I'll go to heaven if I die because I did that. But then Jesus says this reality and that I don't believe that I'm whole, right? And I'll say this and I'll, and I'll be done. When Pastor Mark talked about pursuing the kingdom, the reality is a lot like receiving a suitcase full of everything that we need, okay? In modern day, it wouldn't be a suitcase. It would be like a USB drive, right? That's downloaded with everything that we could possibly need that God has already given to you, right? He's already given you the suitcase, already given you the USB drive, and it has everything that we need for life and godliness in it. The challenge is, is that sometimes we haven't unpacked what we already have. OK, and that's what times like tonight and, and these Thursdays are to do is to help us to what unpack the realities of what God has already given to us through Jesus Christ in his kingdom. Hope that makes sense. So we'll get into the rest of that uh, beginning next Thursday. Uh, I want to open this up where, where I'm done for tonight. See if there's any comments, any questions, anything that anybody would like to say uh, before we before we end for tonight. All right. Well, that's it. Oh, I'll go ahead. Is, is Pastor Mark still on here? It's still, still on. Oh, no, he's still hey, on here. Mark, send me to send me the number for tonight's program. Okay. Okay. Okay, Corey. No, I don't have anything else. So just thank you very much for tonight's Corey. Really appreciate it. All right. Yeah. So, uh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, go yeah. yeah, I was trying to catch up with Pastor Mark, but he could send it my way as well. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Love you guys. Good night. All right. Good night. Uh, love you both. Uh, Pastor Mark has to get out of here. He's actually going into his Bible study. Uh, if you're in the Huntsville, uh, Alabama area, then they have a physical location uh, for some time that we're actually online. And doing their services online but they actually have a physical location that they have so if you're in that area or near that area then i really highly suggest that you look up connected church uh connected strength is what they do with the men's bible study every other saturday but connected church powerful what god is uh, is actually putting in him to has been a huge benefit to other people so i encourage that you do that so he's headed to that uh bible study that they do every thursday night uh, right at, uh, again, we're at Eastern Standard Time, so Eastern 8, uh, Central Standard Time, I believe it's 7 p.m., okay? So I uh, just want to make sure I can end like this. Uh, th this is a, a real important thing, okay? Uh, I, I don't want you to think that this is a waste of your time, okay? I want you to understand how important God's kingdom is. God's kingdom is so important. And again, he says, and he could have said anything, but it's his good will to give us his kingdom. Why would we want to take that lightly, right? And Jesus Christ could have told us to seek anything, right? He had access to it all. And the thing he says to seek first is God's kingdom and his righteousness, right? I wouldn't take that lightly, lightly okay? So with that being said, when we're looking at this emphasis on stewardship and really unpacking this stewardship reality and being effective, right, and efficient, I'm telling you, it matters. You shouldn't want any waste and you should want things to work. Jesus Christ delivered to us, it works, okay? So I'm just really wanting to make sure uh, that we're putting an emphasis on that, okay? So with that being said, I'm done for tonight. I look forward to meeting again on another uh, Thursday night. Again, this is reunited and our goal is to help reunite the body of Christ with the gospel of the kingdom of God. Have a good night. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. Bless you. All right. Amen. Thank you. God bless, Brother Corey. Y'all have a blessed night. Thank you for everything. All right. Thank you so much. Love y'all. Have a good night.